going to come from George Radney. Okay. Hi, George. George, are you there? Oh, sorry. I had to unmute myself. Sorry, but no, <laughs> George okay. Randy, Challenger Community News. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure can. Oh, great, Coach. Uh, glad to get a chance to speak with you. Uh, 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 what, did, what are your plans when you go up a high power, a, an explosive uh, pump return team like the uh, Kansas City team? How do you plan to, to go up against a team like that? I, I, well, the biggest thing I think is you have to execute your plan, your own personal plan. I don't. I think you get yourself in trouble when you start trying to do things that you haven't done all year long. So I think the answer to that is stick with your plan and execute your plan. Okay, our next question will be from Adam Kilgore. Oh, Keith, can you hear me? Hey. Yep. All right. Thanks a lot. Um, I, I'm wondering, um, as, as someone – who's been in the game uh, as a player and as a coach for as long as you have. Um, what do you think the significance of uh, a coaching staff as diverse as yours is for young coaches and young players who aspire to be coaches in the, in the NFL to, to, to see you all in the Super Bowl? Yeah, I, I think that's huge because you have an example uh, of, of, of what it takes and you can, it's demonstrated before you. Um, when I was playing as a young guy uh, in college, there were only two black coaches on, on, the, on each staff. Uh, you'd have one on offense and one on defense. And if you weren't uh, a position, if you didn't play for that uh, specific position coach, you really weren't around him much. You know, whereas we've got, we've got a lot of diversity uh, here. The guys, um, you know, with their good relationships, um, but I think as a young coach and a young player, you have somebody to look up to and you have somebody that you can go talk to and somebody that you talk to about the same. Uh, we all have the same issues. So I think that that's a, a big part of it. OK, we're going to go over to Matt Baker. Hey, Keith, obviously you go back uh, quite a ways with, with Bruce Arians. I'm curious, what uh, about him is the same or, or different from when you knew him uh, at, at Temple? Uh, he, he's full of fire, you know. He he was when I when I played for him, um, and he still is now, you know. But he's honest with you, uh, and that's the thing you appreciate about him. He's straight up and he's honest with you, and that's all you really ask for as a player or a coach. Now you may not like what he says, but he, he's honest with you. Um, you know, and, and, and I think you respect him for that. Uh, but th that's, that's what's remained the same over the years. You know, uh, obviously when we were playing ball back then, we were, it was more of a run offense. You know, it's not now changed to a passing offense and stuff like that. But in terms of him and his personality, you know, it, nothing's really changed. Uh, you know, you, you appreciate uh, his, his uh, honesty and, and his loyalty. Our next question is going to come from Mark with the Chicago Sun-Times. Hey, Keith, how you doing? Good. How you doing, Mark? Good, good. Um, as, as, is the NFL making any progress in hiring special teams coaches as head coaches? And do you and Dave Tobe, have you ever commiserated about that situation where guys seem to have to be position coaches yeah. to get off that stigma of being a special teams guy? Are we getting any closer to guys like yourself, Dave, getting hired as head coaches? Yeah, you know, you had one this year, obviously, in, in New York. Um, but I think what happens, even John Harbaugh had to go from special teams in Philly to coaching, I think it was corners uh, in Philly or safeties, one or the other. But I think he even went to a position before he made the switch over. The thing I think that's misleading is, I, I played both running back. I was a defensive back. Um, shoot, I was an outside linebacker. I've played on both sides of the ball all my life. So it's not like I only played special teams uh, since I've been playing football. But um, I guess people don't see it that way. But, uh, I, you know, obviously it's a, it's a quarterback-led league. Um, that's always going to be – it's always going to be that way. Uh, but I think we're making some progress, though, obviously with the higher – um, this past this past season with the Giants, I think that that was huge. 
A reminder to all media, we ask that you please have your full name and affiliation in your Zoom name. If you do not currently have that, please exit the Zoom, change, edit your name, and re-enter. Our next question will come from Matt Matera. Hey, Coach. Congrats on all the success so far this season. I want to talk about the return game a little bit. Uh, you've had some changes on kick and punt return, but it's mostly been solidified by Jaden Mickens. How would you assess his play so far? How do you feel about the return game in general? And it looked like last game, the NFC Championship game, he had a couple of returns that really set up the box in a good position offensively. Yeah, he did a nice job. Uh, I think Jaden does a nice job of managing the football game. Uh, I think he makes good decisions. Um, you know, he's caught the ball well for us. Uh, he, when, the, when it's there, he had, for the most part, he's gotten the yards that were there. Uh, did a, he did a really nice job this past week with a uh, 40, what was, I think it was like a 43-yard kickoff return and uh, uh, had like a 12-yard uh, punt return. Uh, but I think he's done a solid job for us. He, he's done what we've asked him to do. Um, and he also contributes uh, some in the coverage game. Our next question will be from Anthony Amy. Hey, Keith, how are you? Can you hear me? Sure. All right, great. Uh, congratulations to you. Uh, I was with right. WSB for forever. Uh, uh, covered you in Atlanta and um, wish you the best uh, this coming week. So the question has been asked about the coaching cycle and uh, that topic, of course, I'm sure you'll be asked about it uh, a number of times this week. My question to you is you've been through that process of right. interviews for head coaching positions. Based on what we've seen, uh, I believe it's four uh, African-American coaches over the past uh, four hiring cycles, four out of 27 opportunities, if I'm not mistaken. Right. What do you think should change? What would you like to see different about the process uh, based on your experience and based on what we've seen over these last four years in particular? Um, you know, I've been out of the, probably been out of the cycle of the, uh, interviews, probably what, three, four years now. Um, you know, when I was in it, you always, you always wonder, you know, you always wonder what did you say wrong or what did you do wrong to not get the job, you know, after the interview. Um, so you'd like to, you know, you'd like to get feedback. Uh, so that you could, you would the next time around, maybe you had a better opportunity. Um, you know, so I think that, you know, if anything, from my perspective, I always said, man, that was pretty good. I felt like it was a pretty good interview. And I've been told that it was, you know, that it's a pretty good interview. So you're like, okay, so all right, give me some feedback. What did I do wrong? You'd love to sit down and say, okay, so what was wrong? Where, where did I steer you wrong? You know what I mean? So that would be the, the main question that I would want to ask. We'll go over to Carlos Santos. Hey, Coach. Uh, what Thanks. have you done different uh, for, these, uh, for the Super Bowl that you usually don't do uh, for a regular season game? And what have you told your players about what it will take from them to help win this game? I think the biggest thing you've, and I've said this uh, earlier, I want to say, uh, but the biggest thing is this. We don't need anybody to do anything superhuman. Go out there, compete, all right, play, play your best, all right? Your best is good enough is what I would tell the guys, okay? And that's what we'll sell to them all week long. Whatever it takes, but your best is good enough, um, you, you, what you don't want to do is play outside yourself. When you start talking about, hey, we got to make plays. Well, eh, you know what I mean? Be careful with that because now you got guys doing stuff that's not, not what they normally do and you're going to get yourself in trouble. So I think the biggest thing is this. We, we've played hard. We've played well to this point. Continue to do that. I think the team that plays harder, longer, and the team that actually it executes better is the team that's going to win. Our next question will come from Joshua Allen. Hey, Coach, how are we doing today? Pretty good. You've had some great success this year, bringing guys up off the practice squad. I know Javon Hagen and Quentin Bell and some of those types uh, and implementing them right on the special teams units, and they've had good success. Can you just speak to the, the coaching ability that you that you have and the effort level that these guys have, have given you that, that have been able to put them in successful situations? 
Yeah, I, I got to give the guys a ton of credit. Um, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, just working with them after practice. Uh, they've been relentless. I mean, you know, in terms of, hey, coach, stay out with me. Uh, you know, we'll go through several drills with the guys, but try to anticipate with all these guys. Hey, uh, you know, the biggest thing I say to them is you never know when you're going to be up. And it may, it, it's not going to happen when you want it to happen. So let's make sure we prepare every week as if you're, uh, you're actually going to play. So what we do after practice is the guys that were on the scout team will actually uh, execute the same game plan that we just went through with the guys that are going to be going to be up and playing. So I think a lot of us just spending time with them, uh, keeping them involved during the week in terms of questions and video. So they're not just sitting in a meeting and I, well, I'm not, I'm not up or I'm not playing this week. So I don't need to be, you know, pay attention uh, in the meeting, but just trying to keep the guys involved. And, and a lot of it's come from them, you know, because they're, they stay engaged and uh, they've asked the questions and they've asked for the extra help. So I got to get, I have to give them a lot of credit. A reminder to all media, please have your full name and affiliation in order to be considered for a question. We'll go back to Adam Kilgore. Keith, um, I'm up on, up on what I asked before about the, the diversity of your staff. Um, obviously for Bruce, he, he's committed to the idea of like hiring the best person regardless of what they look like. And I wonder, you've known for a long time, what's your sense of sort of that commitment uh, of by Bruce and like why it matters to him and sort of why it makes the staff uh, you know, the, the best staff it can be? Well, one, because obviously I think you get a lot of different opinions, a lot of different views, uh, age groups as well, uh, that type of stuff. Um, and I think it's important to him because he, he, he's trying to give back. He knows that there are a lot of people out there that, that played for him and he feels like he owes us uh, that opportunity. And, you know, I, I think he wants to give back. Um, you know, and I think it, it, it does help the staff, um, you know, from a age group, the diversity, you know, so coming from Kevin and Todd who, uh, and Todd McNair who played versus coming from me who actually was a GA and in, in college and a college coach and then worked my way back up to the NFL. So, there's a, there's another perspective. So you've got ex player opinions, and then you've got a guy that actually came up the traditional way in terms of a coach uh, who did not. I played in college, obviously did not play in the NFL. Um, so I think you get a lot of different views, um, you know, and in the age groups and the age brackets, that type of stuff. But um, that's why I, I I think you know it it just all lends to you know, one, one decision. And obviously BA makes that decision at the end of the day. We'll go Hopefully I answered your question. We'll go over to Nick Jacobs. Keith, I'm curious for you, you interviewed for the chief's head coaching job uh, back in what 2013 before Andy got, I'm curious, what was that experience yeah. like for you? What do you remember from that meeting with the chiefs? It was, I, I was, it was a great experience. I mean, we interviewed for four or five hours. Um, and I felt like it was probably my best interview. Um, you know, and, and so it, everything about it was, was, I mean, good. We talked personnel, we, you know, uh, coaching staff, um, all down the line, uh, philosophy, you know, practice, everything. Um, you know, so I felt like I, I said, well, you know what? I can't do a better job than what I just did. So, um, you know, and I felt like, you know, I, 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 felt, I felt like I had good energy. Um, you know, it, it's just, you know, it's his decision, you know, obviously as an owner uh, to, to make that decision. And, uh, you know, you, you see that Andy obviously has got, again, the quarterback coaching background, offensive coach, et cetera. So, and as a special teams coach, you're always going to fight that. But, you know, I felt like I had a good shot. I thought I did a good job. Our next question will be from Dennis with the Associated Press. Hi, Keith. I uh, just wanted to ask you about Zach Trinner and uh, the journey he's had to get to this point. You know, talked about his it, 
bouncing around in college and, and, um, and really all teams and tryouts. What has impressed you about him to, to go from that to this point? Well, biggest thing is he comes to work every day. He's a grinder. Um, you know, he, he's blue collar as they come. I love him. Now, he let me call him, tri he let me call him Triner for about, uh, for about six months. And he finally corrected me and told me his name was Trenner. Uh, but I tell you what, you can't, you, you can't find a better guy that's going to come in and go to work every single day. Uh, we've got a, we've got a uh, you know, a practice squad snapper uh, on the roster. He won't let him get a snap during the week. He won't let him get a snap. He's that competitive. He's like, hell no, I ain't losing my job. I said, you're not going to lose your job, you know, but uh he won't let him get a snap, but he's a competitive kid. He's a grinder. He's earned it, uh, you know, and, and I'm happy for him. We'll go over to Mark with the Chicago Sun-Times. Hey, Keith, uh, what's the difference between seeing Brady when you did in the Super Bowl and being around him now? <laughs> yeah, you ain't lying. Um, well, I tell you what, he, he's, he's personable. You know, and I'm glad he's on our side, you know, um, he, he, he's a, he's a good person, you know, it, he, he's really a good guy. I mean, he, he, he's got no reason to remember my name and he does every day. That's the best, you know, I mean, I get, you know, if you associate my, my association with him here, yeah, I mean, he's obviously a great quarterback and all that type of stuff, but he's a hell of a leader. He's a hell of a leader, does a great job, obviously. Um, I'm glad he's on our side. Our next question will come from Matt Matera. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Coach, I don't think we could talk about Buck's special teams without mentioning kicker Ryan Suckup. How important has he been to the team this season with his consistency? He, he's a true professional. Um, you, you can't ask for more. I mean, he, he, he's committed um he's a true pro he brings all the other guys along with him and it, it's not with his mouth it's by demonstration uh he is a he's a true leader and um you know he's he's a he's a serious uh guy takes his profession very serious he's uh, um he's he's a pleasure because he's the same guy every day um a true a true pro Really a pleasure to be around. If any media have a question, please raise your hand. We'll go back to Matt. Coach, another guy that's important to this team is Kevin Minter. Uh, he played a big role taking place for Devin White when he was out uh, in the postseason. And um, I, he's a special teams captain as well. So what right. does he mean to you and to the other players for, uh, for his role on, on special teams and this whole, this whole team in general? Yeah, tough and smart, you know. Um, that's what you're looking for. Uh, but he, you know, he's, he's consistent, smart guy. Uh, I don't know that he has many mental errors through, through the course of the week. And he's a good example to the players, to the younger guys in terms of how to do things. Um, but you, he's a physical guy who, who's smart, and uh, I, I can't say enough about his leadership on the field with drills, uh, technique, all that type of stuff. He's, he's constantly on the guys. He's involved with them in the meetings. You know, we'll, we'll set up some post-practice meetings where I intentionally don't want to be in the meeting, and he's one of the guys in that room that's running those meetings. So he's a big part of uh, what the – what we've done. We have time for a few more. Our next question will come from Mark Canizero. Yeah, I just have a little bit of an offbeat question about Tom Moore uh, and just kind of what he brings to you guys. And, and, and can you imagine doing what he's doing at his age and still with that kind of energy? Can, if you have any anecdotes or anything like that. Oh yeah. He's my next door neighbor. Um, my office is right next to his. I, I see him every, every morning. He's the, probably the first one in the building and I get in at five 30 and he's already been here and he always asked me, Hey, did you bring it? Did you bring the afternoon paper with you? 
So I, I uh, he, he's something else. Uh, smart guy. I love him. I mean, I, I go in and visit with him uh, every day and, and, and hope and learn something, you know, that uh, just some way to relate things to the players. How do you teach this? What would Chuck Knoll say about this? You know, uh, all of the, I mean, he's just a, a wealth of knowledge and uh, I lean on him consistently. You know, he's probably tired of me. So what I do is in the mornings, every now and then I'll bring him a Starbucks treat, you know what I mean? To try to, try to suck up to him and, 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 and bleed some information out of him. But, but you talk about a guy that's got a ton of experience. Uh, I mean, he, I, I constantly, anytime I go in his office, I've got notepad and pencil, you know, and I, I'm like, okay, say that again. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, you know, he's just a, a huge help. He, he's been tremendous, uh, to me, uh, but, and to our staff and, and the other coaches. Um, in particular, to, you know, obviously the younger guys, but uh, I look, he, he, he is something. And I would love to do that at, at his age, to be able to still, you know, to come in and coach. He's first, he's, he's going to be in here early every single morning and he's consistent with it every day. So uh, it, it's great to be around him. Our next question will come from Rick Stroud. Can you hear me, Keith? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Coach, uh, you, you probably discussed this already and been hopping around, but uh, Bruce Arians said a, a couple uh, days ago he was he was ticked off that Byron Leftwich didn't even get an interview, right? And, I mean, this is the, the thing that's been going on with this league. It doesn't make sense. I'm sure he feels the same way about you. He's got great coaches on his staff. So when you guys – do you talk about it? Is it – how – how, what's your best advice for anybody that, uh, that that wants to be a head coach and is African American in this league? Well, keep plugging. You know, um, all we can do is is to continue uh, continue to do a great job, be consistent, um, and 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 you know, from our end and from our end or from our side of it. That's all that that's all that we can do is control what you're in control of. For me, it's to go do a great job on special teams. And you know, you know whether it's personnel, whether it's you know in the offseason or whether it's uh, on the field, you know, I've got to do the best that I can do uh, to set it up so that younger guys that come into this league have an opportunity to become special teams coordinators. And then maybe have the opportunity at that time to uh, to get a head coaching job or, or you know get in that interview process and maybe land a job. But I, I think the best thing that I can do for anybody else is to is to do my job and do it well, so that I can at least say, okay, well, here's a guy he's done it well, uh, and and let's give him an opportunity. Final question will come from Rob Romerhauser. Hi. Hello. Hi, my name is Rob. I would like to ask you a question about special teams. Um, yeah. Some players are um, offensive players that are included in special teams. Do you still think it's a good idea to have offensive players as on special teams because it can injure the team through runs? Uh, yeah, I think I don't think you have a choice um, uh, on the 45 man roster. There's only so many guys up and active. So that your 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 receivers and your running backs and your tight ends all have to all have to contribute at some point. I mean, your offensive line is on field goal protection. Um, so I think I think that's league wide that everybody has offensive and defensive players on special teams. It's where the team comes together. Okay, Coach, that's all for today. We appreciate you taking the time. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.